George rushed to show it to the man with the yellow hat. Then... He realized he forgot something. <laughs> George, I, what's wrong? Someone left that in the elevator. <laughs> oh. Um, George, did we bring the skunk home in the basket? <laughs> we have to catch it without scaring it, or... You know. Oh, we can't let that happen. Split up! Catch that skunk! The skunk was pretty confused to wake up in a strange new place, and it really wanted breakfast. No, stop! Come back! You're caught! Oh, boy. Stop! I'm organizing one elevator trip for all the floors to cut down chances of scaring the skunk. Skunk? Shh! Don't do that! Right. Sorry. skunk finished eating, it would have no choice of where to go. The coast is skunk clear. <laughs> okay, going down. Wait for me. <laughs> Zubal, don't frighten it. <laughs> oh, this is Jeffrey. He's a domesticated skunk. He's odorless. Ah, <sighs> <laughs> oh, so that's the skunk that George saw. <laughs> Wait till George finds out we were all worried about nothing. George's plan was working. In another second, that skunk would be captured by monkey ingenuity. <gasps> George, you didn't see a wild skunk? She did. Don't anyone move. It's, I mean, she's happy. As long as nothing scares her, we're okay. That ends our program of mellow jazz. And now, highlights from the 1812 Overture. Oh, no. Mrs. Rankins, we may have a rules violation here. <laughs> oh my 
gosh! We gotta follow him! Oh, boy. George could see his house from up here. Oh! Ah, oh, no need to panic, George. There's a proper method for getting a balloon back down on the ground. I, I'm coming, George! <sighs> Why'd you stop? Because this is a truck, not a dock. Roll, Mr. Quint. Roll like the wind. But I have a motor. Then you motor like the wind. I'll roll. It sounded like Bill wanted to go back home. Hmm? Hmm. This sure looked like a steering wheel. So George decided to steer them home. Oh, oh no, it, it's going higher! George, that increases the flame! Heating the air makes us go up higher! <laughs> George, right now the important thing is stopping this balloon. Maybe those sandbags were the balloon's anchors. <laughs> okay, they're just ahead. Got it! Whoa, whoa, whoa. Well, uh, good luck then. Oh, oh, whoa! Oh, 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 oh. I've got you, George! Oh, that's not a safe and approved manner to ride a balloon! I know, Bill! I, I know! Now, now, don't worry, I I'm gonna help you! Oh, oh, oh. This is what happens if you don't follow the rules. <laughs> the wind's getting stronger. You can tell from that flag down there. It could be worse, huh? At least the wind's not blowing us toward the ocean. Oh no! The wind changed! It's blowing towards the sea! Do you know what that means? Pull that cord. It will open up the vent and he can fly out the top. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what? We're dropping. The vent, it lets hot air out. <laughs> so that's how you make a balloon go down. George, you saved us! <laughs> oh no, the wind's picking up. We're gonna land in the ocean! I've got you, George! Yeah! Proper way to worry without panicking. <gasps> My camera! Oh, I forgot to take pictures. <laughs> That's a great one. George, <laughs> you took the pictures for me. <laughs> if I didn't and you didn't, George thought all night about how he could keep his toys set up. The next day, Betsy and Steve rushed over to play. Ah! Let's set up as fast as we can. No time to waste. It's not as big, but it's also not on the floor. Does that mean we don't have to spend time putting it all away? <laughs> You're so smart. 
Why couldn't I have had a monkey instead of a brother? You guys will never escape! Clank! Clank! There's no escape! But George had an idea. <laughs> Fearless George had to think fast. I'll help you set it up out there. You can leave it as long as you want. <laughs> this is great, George. We don't have to waste a lot of time building it and then putting it away. <laughs> a polar bear with a suitcase the same size as the one of ones. Hmm. This needed investigation. Ah! Where'd all this water come from? Uh, rain! Get everything inside! George wondered if the store might have a solution to keeping his toys out of the way. Vacuum might pick them up. Hmm. Yeah! <laughs> but then again, maybe not. The pyramid was too tall. <gasps> now it was perfect. This one moves so smoothly. It rolled. Things that roll move smoothly. But train boxcars were just right. Missing one. Stop him! I want the one! <laughs> yes! With the aid of his loyal pterodactyl, Hansel. Well, that was certainly an unexpected twist. He returned the missing one to where it belonged. <laughs> Another mission accomplished by Fearless George, hero of heroes. <laughs> A wizard trapped on the South Pole by penguins! And if we run out of time, we just roll it under the bed. Ah. Whether he was being a wizard or cleaning up toys, Fearless George was up to any challenge. <laughs> All the stars were in nice rows. Ah. All except one. George could fix that. That's when George learned how windy it is in a moving car. Can you imagine? It took the town a hundred years to complete that. Uh -oh. Folks will go absolutely wild when they see all hundred stars on the anniversary jubilaria. How wild would they go when they saw no stars? 
George had to tell the men about what happened. Oh, oh. Anna, Anna, ah! Just the guy we need. Can you come help with the costumes? Sure. George, do you mind staying here and helping with the Anniversa Jubilaria? Uh. Thanks. Ow. <laughs> A good place to start was where the stripes flew out of the car. <gasps> and it was. Jumpy. He'd understand George needed this. <laughs> but Jumpy didn't care. He wanted it. George didn't want to rip it. No squirrel could resist a three for one trade. Found two more. Now he had six. <laughs> Getting all the stripes was going to be easy for this clever monkey. <laughs> now the river had six, and George had none. This was the safest place for them. The Anniversary Jubilaria will now be unveiled after the band plays. That's earlier than planned. Earlier? <gasps> Those weren't table runners. They were missing stripes. Let's give a warm welcome to our town founders. All George could think about was where to look for those last two stripes. Town here, and name it, oh my word! So the original name of this town was, oh my word? George already had eight stripes. One more made nine. Now he only had to find one more stripe. George had no time left. Hey, George, did you see my kite? I found a great tail on the ground right in the yard. <gasps> Look, an eagle! <gasps> ah, oh, it's flying away with my tail! <clears throat> it must want it for its nest. The eagles have a nest on top of Mount Neverclimb. In just a minute, we'll be unveiling the Anniversa Jubilaria. Now with 100 hard-earned stars. <laughs> 10 stripes with 10 stars makes 100 stars. Phew. Wow, everyone I've ever known is here, but not George. He's gonna miss the big 100. Oh, sorry. But we can't wait anymore. Happy 100th anniversary! Yeah! Oh, oh, George. Uh, George? Uh, careful. Mr. Quint wouldn't want a speck of dirt on those. <laughs> This was about the hardest George had ever worked on something no one would ever know about. George had had a great day. Still, even counting by tens, 100 was an exhausting number. That 
bleep is now being picked up by the Mini's external microphone. And the louder it gets, the closer you are to the bleeping gift. I'll pilot the Mini from here. Here I go, wave goodbye oh. and say hello <laughs> to a world I've never seen. Catch my jaw dropping from it, I just saw in my George, do you see it? <laughs> There's only one explanation. When George retracted the grabbers, he saw the crabs run away. And then he saw something else. Had control. George took command because a monkey always gets his bleeping thing. Sounds like he's getting warmer. He's chasing it. Of course, George doesn't know the meaning of give up or dental floss. went out, the bleeping stopped. <laughs> oh. George, I'm afraid that means the battery died. You'll never find it in the darkness. <laughs> George was disappointed he couldn't find the gift. He went so deep, there was nothing down there at all. Nothing? There was lots down here living in the dark. And the fish were completely different from the ones he saw closer to the surface. Other lit up fish, too. They were swimming around something. The recorder. <gasps> George didn't know if they were just curious about that thing or helping him. But he couldn't have found it without the help of his glowing fish friends. <laughs> we asked the right monkey for help. <laughs> Thought you might like a copy of the last thing it recorded. <gasps> <laughs> it's always nice to have pictures of your friends. And how many friends can light themselves for a perfect picture every time?
but cities are noisy places. <gasps> Double O Monkey couldn't hear or see Steve anywhere. Hmm. Luckily, Super Spies used more than two senses. He'd hmm. use his nose. But there were a lot of sniffs to sniff. He'd need a smell to outsmell all the other smells. He'll be done brushing his teeth any second. Whew. <laughs> That's really strong. I hope this works. The recital is in two days. Gotta go to that place I go to do that thing I do that has nothing to do with dance recitals. <coughs> Did Aunt Margaret wash my backpack? Guess so. Huh. She must have switched detergents. This is super smelly. Double O Monkey could smell Steve from here. <laughs> His tracking devices were working like a charm. Oh no, Steve's scent was drowned in a sea of similar smells. George would never be able to pick up Steve's trail. I hope Charky is able to follow the crumbs. Otherwise, I'll be covered in whatever Steve's making me this time. Steve's trail ended here. Which room was Steve in? Hmm. He could smell the backpack, too. He's gonna love this. Double O Monkey couldn't see through the window. Maybe he could feel what it was. It felt like a jar, and it was wet. Paint? That was a weird good luck gift. Although, Betsy did love to paint. Maybe Steve had a whole set of paints for her? George had to warn her. Double O Monkey was too late. Luckily, super spies are very fast on their feet. This is for you. It's beautiful. Thank you. But why'd you make me a vase? Because it wasn't anything that could slop on you. Look, it's supposed to be you doing your solo. It sure was lucky you were here, George. That vase would have smashed into a zillion pieces. Double O Monkey saves the day again. <laughs> no, Charky, look out! Oh, oh. oh boy. What? He sprained his ankle? How can I train for the race without him? <laughs> you want to be my personal trainer? <laughs> okay. Hi, George. Professor Wiseman called. She said you tried to help her train for the race. <laughs> well, don't give up. I think it's a great idea. And I found something that might help. 
It's an old training video I used to watch called Run For Your Life. You, yeah, you. Are you ready to run like you mean it? <laughs> uh, you might want to take notes. <laughs> Tip number one. Before you hit the road, you gotta get graceful. You gotta stretch those muscles. Mmm, <laughs> stretching does feel good. Okay, what's next, George? Ooh. <laughs> Time to run? <laughs> oh, but not too fast, right? <laughs> All right, then. Let's go. Ah, thanks. Much better. <laughs> so far, Professor Wiseman's training was going great. <laughs> and then, not so great. I think running is for me, George. I find it, well, boring. Huh? I'd much rather be carbon dating a stromatolite. Um, uh... <laughs> the training coach didn't say anything about boring. The problem is, I don't have time to be bored. I should get back to the museum. Thanks for trying, George. Huh? Huh? <laughs> You want to show me something, George? Uh -huh. Okay, let's go. <sighs> Is this a Ferris wheel? <laughs> okay, I've never been on one of these before. <laughs> What an amazing view! That George took her to all his favorite places. <laughs> oh, I never knew running would make me feel this good. I have so much energy now. Thank you, George. For the Ferris wheel, for the balloons, for teaching me that running is fun. <laughs> okay, I'm ready. Oh, no! I forgot my water! <laughs> oh, thanks. So, you really think I can do this? <laughs> the professor seemed to be doing everything right. She ran at a steady pace. Do you see her? I don't see her. She looks tired. That's a cramp in your leg, George, and they can be very painful. Ooh. Ooh. Hi there. I thought it'd be fun if my personal trainer finished the race with me. They thought I needed to work a little less and have fun a little more. That's right, because all work and no play is a crummy way to spend your day. <laughs> <laughs> to thank you for helping me learn that lesson, I want you to have my medal. Oh! <laughs> This direction, green. In this direction, a path. <laughs> George couldn't believe what he was seeing. Someone was trying to break that branch. Somebody was not being a sprout. <laughs> oh. Hey, are you a monkey? <laughs> cool. I always wanted a monkey, but my mother said no. George had to do something, and fast. This tree was in trouble. Hey, 
Hey! Return the headgear, monkey! <laughs> Stop! <laughs> George didn't mean for the hat to get wet. Or the man. But George couldn't wait around. He had to check on that tree. Please. We're not lost. We're just misplaced. According to my compass, this way is north, this way is south, and east and west are here and here. Uh, but without a map, that doesn't really help us. But you know what? We can determine our precise location using an analog watch. We just need to know the true local time. Do you know the true local time? I have another idea. Let's ask George to climb a tree and... Oh no, I left George in the tree. I... George, where are you? George! George wished he could think of a way to get the branches back on the tree. He needed something sticky, really sticky, like mud. <laughs> Another great monkey invention. <laughs> the tree wrecking man was coming back and he'd probably want to keep on wrecking. <laughs> you are one crazy monkey. I haven't run like that since... Hey, where's my lopper? That thing I was cutting branches with? George, can you hear me? George! <laughs> George! Oh, oh, thank goodness I found you! Oh, I'm sorry I left you in that tree. Oh, Dr. Greenbean, nice to see you. Sorry we're late. We've had a rough day. Tell me about it. First, this monkey ran off with my hat, and now my tree lopper has vanished. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> hey, what's going on? Who put mud on this? Uh, George? <laughs> Ah, so Dr. Greenbean was cutting some branches, and you thought he was hurting the tree. Uh-huh. Oh, you should have asked. Oh, wait, <laughs> you're a monkey. Well, anyway, this is called pruning. You make a careful cut, and it doesn't hurt the tree at all. Uh -huh. <laughs> He's right, George. I've pruned many a tree in my day. You see, George, too many branches are bad news. They block the sun, and then the fruit can't grow. Oh. <laughs> but hey, I'm proud of you, George. You behaved just like an honorary sprout. In fact, I would say your effort on behalf of trees qualifies you for full sprout status. <laughs> Great, George. Oh, George! Nice work for a city kid. <laughs> Okay, Sprouts, let's go get some lunch, and Dr. Greenbean can tell us everything he knows about trees. Uh, Bill, are you coming? In a minute. I'm still trying to figure out where we are. Oh. Huh. Hey, I got it! Uh, Mr. Sproutmaster, according to this, you're going the exact wrong... Wait! 